It's 6th October 1950, here in Kamdo. Tibetan soldiers see Chinese army sneaking into their territory. Little but they knew that it is the foolproof strategic plan of Chinese invasion by Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong lived 10,000 years. Mao's Great Leap Forward was a huge catastrophe that killed 45 million people and totally destroyed the economy. Within a span of 14 days, the entire Kamdo region was captured. 180 Tibetan soldiers were either killed or wounded, and the first phase of Mao's strategy was successfully executed. Before going further, let's see the reason why China wanted Tibet so badly. Tibet is a strategically important location for China to establish its supremacy in South Asia. China considered Tibet as a palm and Himalayan regions as its five fingers. China sees Tibet as a strategic passage to extend its geopolitical ambition in South Asia. One way to achieve that supremacy is by choking Asia's water source. Average height of Tibet is equivalent to five Burj Khalifa stacked on top of each other. Being at such a height and surrounded by glaciers make Tibet the source of Asia's great rivers like Brahmaputra, Mekong, Yangtze, Indus, Yellow and Salween. It is also called Asia's water tower. It plays a very crucial role as a water provider to these countries. So Tibet's geographical location is very important and strategic to obtain power in South Asia. Any disruption in the water source at Tibet will cause major downward chain reactions in the other Asian countries. Apart from water, Tibet is rich at minerals like copper, iron, zinc, lead, which helps China feed the booming economy. In fact, China's biggest copper deposit is at Tibet. Tibet also has significant crude oil and natural gas reserves, but its harsh high altitude terrain makes extraction costly and challenging. Now that we have established why Tibet is so important for China, let's head back to how China invaded Tibet. After invading Kamdo region of Tibet, China sent a captured Tibetan commando to Lhasa to reiterate terms of negotiations with Dalai Lama. Nabu was a weak leader, ready to surrender. He was obviously not the military chief that Tibet needed at that point. Dalai Lama and his advisors knew that Tibet is not militarily and tactically ready to oppose the seasoned Chinese troops. So Dalai Lama, who was teenager back then, signed 17-point agreement with China. Under this agreement, China guarantees to give Tibetan regional autonomy and freedom to practice their religious beliefs. In exchange, China gets to set up its civilian and military headquarters in Tibet. In other words, taking over the entire Tibet. But the question is, did China keep its part of the bargain? Well, obviously no. Since China's occupation, 1.2 million Tibetans have lost their lives. 600,000 monks and nuns have been dead, disappeared or imprisoned. Up to 6,000 monasteries and shrines have been destroyed. Tibetans have become a kind of minority in their own country. Seeing the situation of his country, Dalai Lama and his followers revolted against Chinese. In retaliation, Chinese troops crushed the Dalai Lama revolt and killed thousands of Tibetans in the process. Concerning threat to his life and loss of Tibetan leadership, Dalai Lama with his 20,000 followers fled to India, where he finally got political asylum. To the people who don't know, Dalai Lama is not a name, but a highest spiritual title in Tibet. The actual name of Dalai Lama is Tenzing Gyatso. He is 84 years old. With his advancing age, the question of who will succeed him has become more pressing. In Tibet, the Dalai Lama never dies but is reborn in a different body. Once the ruling Dalai Lama dies, his devotees and followers start the journey of finding the reborn Dalai Lama. 
The current Dalai Lama since young age was able to recall the objects used by previous Dalai Lama. He was also able to identify items used for rituals and Buddhist process. So Dalai Lama is currently in India and protesting from a distance. He has won widespread international support for the Tibetan independence movement. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in recognition of his non-violent campaign to end the Chinese domination of Tibet. Tibetans held peaceful protests on a frequent basis in several parts of India, especially North India, to highlight the illegal occupation of China on their motherland. They want to bring the attention of the international community to Tibet's issue and want support for their freedom. This video also aims to do the same. It aims to educate people regarding Tibet. How was it illegally occupied by China and how China has been destroying the Tibetan culture, language and community. Let us know in the comments the possible steps the international community should take to free Tibet from China's occupation.